Tour, the very best in science fiction and fantasy. Now, the, the thing that we all have in common uh, is that, in addition to being writers, of course, that our next books or our upcoming books are books that feature a uh, teenage characters who That's also true. happen to be female. Because the title of my next book is Zoe's Tale, which uh, focuses on Zoe uh, Booten Perry, who is the daughter of the protagonists in the first three Old Man's War books. Um, and it basically follows her story um, in the events of the that are going on in the, in the Old Man's War universe. And I can't talk about it too much for, for two reasons. One, because I want to make it a little bit of a surprise for folks, and also because I'm still writing it, so... I don't know what's going to happen to her, for at least half of the book. Are there zombies? Are there zombies? Unfortunately, no zombies. No zombies. But so, so this is a it's a teenage character, but is it a young adult novel? It is. It is a uh, book that I will be able to uh, have young adults read. <laughs> what? Uh, so, what? What this means is that uh, one of the things that we are interested in is uh, not losing your adult audience. Well, not so much. Not so much that, but um, one of the things that makes difficult uh, for Old Man's War or Ghost Brigades or Last Colony to get placed in a lot of uh, libraries uh, for, for teenagers or for, for young adults is the that swearing. Yeah, there's a lot of profanity and there's, you know, sex. And, some, and it's, not, it's not in the structure of, of YA generally where you, uh, and, and how that's uh, often done that way. It's just they're swearing and they're, you know, having sex. Um, so in this one, we, we and have... And as we all know, teenagers never swear. They never they swear and they never sex. sex. They're, good, they're good, clean, clean living kids. But um, in this one, we are making an effort to make, uh, make sure that, you know, we don't ping any buttons unnecessarily. And at the same time, we don't want it to be lame. So... There's nothing lame about YA, Scotty. I'll push you out that way. No, no, not lame about YA. <laughs> not lame about YA. No, lame lame about, about what I'm writing. Lame about right. what I'm writing. So that because what you want is you want a book that is uh, that is going to be fun to read. That's going to be fun to read for multiple levels of folks, um, but you, that you don't get the feeling that you're you're holding anything back. And so that's an interesting right. and that's an interesting balancing act. So it, it and has, also if you're writing for a different audience or. There, there's some chance of a different audience. I guess you have to sort of re-exposit and assume they haven't read the other three. Right. Well, and this is this is a, but all your books have done. That. Yeah. Well, this is one of the things that I've been really careful about is that um, for for me, um, I always make the assumption that whoever's reading the current book is not reading has not read the other books, so that um, when they pick it up, they can follow it, and then if they finish it and they're like, wow, that was cool. And what? There are other books in the series? Cool. And then they can go in. So that every book is its own, basically every book is its own doorway into the universe. Right. And, that, and that's sort of the thing that you have to do. And it's particularly easy when you have a new character. Yes. I mean, I, you know, I, I was trying some of the same thing with extras because it is a new character. Right. Although it, it's kind of complicated because you have to exposit the whole right. uglies regime to know what it is that I is reacting against. So right. that's kind of interesting. And um, I mean, Justine, one of the great things about Justine's book is that you do, which we didn't talk about very much, is that you do get um, you do get a sense of a whole world in which everyone thinks a lot about their fairies. Otherwise, it's a world like ours. It's not medieval or, you know, you know because there's cars, there's cell phones, there's all those things going on. Right. And, but everybody, it's very different because everybody knows and thinks about what their fairy is. Right. Like some people have a good hair fairy, the movie stars have... Really, I don't. <laughs> That's so annoying. I was just about to say that. What? About my hair? Uh -huh. so, I mean, we should, we should like put up pictures of your hair next to the podcast I'm so having, people can see how badly this man needs a haircut. You know, the thing is is that some I could use a good hair fairy because God knows I've had basically a bad hair life. Even when I, <laughs> even when I didn't have a bald spot, right? Um, it was just... I could never do anything with my hair. So I would love to have a, 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 a good, good hair, hair fairy. It would be good. Anyway, I'm sorry. We got distracted. No, no, of course. Um, no, there's good hair fairies, um, loose change finding fairies, never getting lost fairies. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and there's the sort of claims that people actually do make about mm. themselves. I mean, one of the really cool things is when I do a reading from this book, which I actually have been doing for the last year or so, afterwards everybody starts talking about what their fairy is, mm -hmm. what family members' fairies are. And mm -hmm. I mean, at one reading, this little girl came up to me and started telling me about how her mom has a finding money fairy and mm -hmm. how her dad has, you know, 
good with animals, fairy. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, and what's your fairy? And I was like, well, I don't really have a fairy. And she said, yes, you do. You have the good story fairy. There you go. <laughs> I have the sloth fairy. <laughs> okay, this is, this is no joke. My fairy is the sloth fairy because God knows I'm the world's laziest person. And yet somehow, almost always my sloth seems to work out for me. And of course, the perfect example of that was Old Man's War, which I was like, I don't even want to bother to send it out to publishers. And I didn't, and I just put it up on my website, because it was easy. And then, you know, they found it there, and they published it anyway. So Techno sloth. Techno sloth fairy, <laughs> right, exactly. It's like, that's, that would be the fairy for me. You call that the procrastination fairy. Yeah, I've, I've seen that too. It's the you know, if I don't clean my room, maybe mom will eventually. Sooner or later, something will happen. That yeah, I will. or or if I don't write this article, maybe the magazine will go out of business, <laughs> <laughs> and then that will have saved me the effort of being disappointed. Or mm -hmm. so actually writing the article. Yes, exactly. Well, let me ask you this because we were just talking about it a little bit briefly because both of us are in the kind of the same situation where we have an existing trilogy of books. Right. And then... A companion novel. Uh, yeah, and a companion novel. And is that, is that for you, was it a little uh, kind of... Because for me, because I'm, I'm still currently writing it, it is kind of weird because I don't... The, the thing that I'm, I want to you know, be clear about is that trilogy is that trilogy. That trilogy is done. This trilogy, or not this trilogy, but this particular book is related, you know, but at the same time, new, you know, new main character... Uh, different concerns. It's going to, if it goes anywhere from here, it'll branch off to, into, into new things. Um, it's kind of in, it's, but it's in that no man's land of not quite being its own thing, but at the same time, but not quite being of that trilogy. Right. Um, it was a little easier, it was fairly easy for me because the first, the other three books are all so tightly, they're all in the same time frame. Right. Uglies, Pretties, and Specials. They're all, it all takes place in about a year. It's all from the same point of view. Right. There's no, there wasn't a lot of scope. So moving to another character on another continent three or four years later mm -hmm. wasn't, um, wasn't really that. You know, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty clear the ways in which it's different. Right. And also the world has completely changed. Right. There's a whole new world to exposit and to, to show how it works and to, to reveal, even though some of the language is the same and some of the slang and, and the, the sort of future history is the same. Right. There's no... Um, it is kind of different. I mean, I did two books called Peeps and Last Days mm -hmm. that were really companion novels. They had mostly different characters in them. Right. And, and they were just set in that same in the same summer of zombie apocalypse in New York City. Right. And they um, and they're kind of and they and you know Peeps was a one character and Last Days had five different characters talking. Mm -hmm. So there was really a sense that they were different. But I really enjoy that. I think that's one of the natural ways of storytelling in yeah. science fiction. Because it's it's fun well, to look all at the genre, world. Not just science fiction. Well, yeah, true. Fa science fiction, fantasy, horror, all those kinds of genres. Or because you want even wanna... crime is another one where you set up your world and milieu, and then you can keep coming back and playing with it in different ways. Right. right. And looking at it from different directions is actually more useful mm -hmm. than looking at it just from the same place. Because you, you, it's not just about a character; it's about the world. Right. And that's one of the things that I think is really interesting because I think that there is there are pressures to basically once you've created a world is to basically hit the same marks in the world over and over again and in one sense that might have some benefits financially or selling but on the other hand as a writer you don't want to yeah you don't want you don't want to you don't want to hack it out yeah i mean and the point i think of like really i mean one of the reasons i love world building so much mm -hmm. is you've created this entire new world and there's all this stuff but you don't really know what all the stuff is at the end of one book set there mm -hmm. you don't even know what all the stuff is at the end of two books I think you need at least like three or four to really get your teeth in and really kind of discover everything that's going on. Not only that, but I think that it's also the case, I mean, it's certainly the case for me, um, and I, I would expect, I, both of you get a lot of reader feedback as well, that the readers ask questions about the universe that you haven't even thought of yet, yes. or right, or they track down the things where you've like, I'm being very hazy here because <laughs> I haven't thought this out, and they're like, no, no, go back here. That right, yeah, and by then you've had a certain, by the time you've written three books, you've had a certain amount of uh, fan mail and other kinds of feedback where, yeah, where those concerns are there. And there's things you haven't even thought of at all. Right. Maybe you were purposefully leaving them fuzzy because it would have been hard <laughs> yes. to, to figure out how it works. <laughs> and sometimes, I mean, in a, I, I said before that the book I enjoy writing most in a trilogy, and this was the case both for Midnighters 
and for um, the Ugly series. Midnighters being a, another trilogy. Yeah, that another trilogy read. of mine. In both those cases, the book, maybe it's not the best book, but the book I enjoyed the most was the second book. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because that's, you Definitely. don't have to set everything up right. in the first book. You don't have to explain everything. It's already rolling. You don't have to wrap everything up. Right. You don't have to, you know, bring all the threads together. You can just sort of play in that playground. So I can see why people want to do 20 book series, because then you have 18 little books. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And actually, I mean, what goes along with that is the book I found hardest to write. I also have another trilogy, the Magical Madness trilogy. Um, the third book of that was really hard to write, mm -hmm. like really hard. Um, kind of went through a billion drafts throughout heaps. I mean, I changed the ending like a hundred times. Um, it was really hard to kind of Put make it all, all the threads and make it work. And yeah, because it's no longer a playground. It's something, you know, you are wrapping it up. You are like finishing. It's like finishing a novel is hard. Right. Finishing a, a series is harder because yeah. it's not only finishing up that particular story, but it's finishing up all the other stories. Yeah. And you can't go back to the beginning to change things. Right. So that, like, you know, when you're writing a new novel and you're winding up, that's, you can go back. Because if, nobody if, knows. Yeah. If you need, you know, um, a hairpin. Killer, yeah, a hairpin up front or killer unicorns or whatever you need at the front of the of the book. You can put them there. <laughs> I was wondering if we were going to get the unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, we have to wrap up now because we're uh, we're going long and also we have to go to dinner, or at least I have to go to dinner. So, final thoughts, Scott Westerfeld. I have no thoughts. You would, you would make a great talk show host, John. I so try. I try. Well, no, this is this is you know my 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 previous uh, incarnation as a as an interviewer because God did all those interviews when I was working for a newspaper with famous people. With famous people, not like the people I'm stuck with now. But uh, anyway, who are Scott Westerfeld, author of Extras? Justin Lovelace, dear. And author of author of uh, Ultimate. Ultimate Fairy Book and the Magic Commanders trilogy. And I, of course, am John Scalzi. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll catch you all later. Bye bye.